Okay, what is Google Drive? That's a good way to start, I think. So first of all, Google Drive provides 15 gigabytes of free cloud-based storage to you. So if you want some extra storage space, if, you're, if your hard drive or your iPad is running out of storage space, you can get a Google Drive account and you get 15 gigabytes of free storage. Now, how big is 15 gigabytes? It's a lot, but it's, you know, it's, it, it'll, hold a, it'll hold a lot of music, it'll hold a lot of photos, it'll hold documents, it'll hold probably not too many videos, but, um, but it's a good size, we can, you can figure that out. So that's the first thing it does. It provides access to those files from anywhere using any device. So if you go on a vacation and you're at your cousin's house and you forgot to take your computer and you need to get your files, you can sign into Google Drive from there and get the files that you've put on Google Drive. If, um, so that's what that's all about. So you have access to files even though you don't have, wherever you created them, you, you know. Um, it also facilitates sharing files with family, friends, or worker, work teams. So if you, if you have files on Google Drive, you can specify that you want those files to be shared with other people, other Google users, and they can then access those files based on what permissions you might uh, give them. And we'll talk some more about that as we get in. And it integrates with Google's Office Suite which is a word processor and a spreadsheet program and a slide program, which is how I created these slides. Um, and several other, well, several, my goodness. Uh, uh, thousands of other products. But uh, you, once you've started using Google Drive, then you can start working with those other products too and they fit, fit right together there. So that's basically what it is at, at a high level. So, why would you want to use Google Drive? Well, number one is, I'd like to be able to access files from different places, same files, as opposed to having multiple copies of files on different devices, and then they get out of sync and, uh, and messed up. So this way, you have one copy of the file, resides on Google Drive, but you can get to it from wherever you are. You want to share files with your family and friends. It could be pictures, it could be newsletters, it could be, you know, anything. And you want to share that with your family or friends somehow. Uh, the other thing that a lot of people do is they want to collaborate with coworkers. So you're on a team and you're developing some, something, you're developing a report or something, and you're two or three people working on it. You can have a centralized copy of that document and you can have three people updating it at the same time and it tracks who's, who's, who's updating that, what they're doing, and any, any time at all you want to. You can look to see what changes everybody has made. You can undo selected changes. So it's very handy if, you have, if you're working in a team and you're, you're not together physically. Um, you want to get rid of some files off your computer. You got too much, you know, you're running out of space. So you know, like I said, you get 15, uh, 15 gigabytes of free storage. You can buy more if you want to. Um, you want to make backup copies of important files. For example, if you have, uh, you know, your family history there and you've been monkeying with it and you want to back it up before you do something else or you want to put it off site, uh, Google, once you put something on Google Drive, Google's starting to make backups of them as well. So if, you're, you know, if their server goes down, they'll have a backup and you won't even know that it happened. They'll just, it'll just get replaced for you on that. Uh, if you're currently paying for Microsoft Word, Excel, or some other uh, software packages on your computer, and uh, you want to stop paying for that, you can do this and then you can use Google's products for free. There's no charge for using those. Uh, you or somebody has said hey I've got a file a, a Google file I want to share with you but if you're not a Google user you may not be able to, to access that file so that's another reason and the last reason is you work for some organization or you're involved with some organization 
and they're using Google Drive, and you need to be uh, able to participate and gather that information. So those are some of the things why you might want to use Google Drive. Uh, anything else? Anybody think of any other reasons why you want to use Google Drive? No. Okay. So let's see what else we got here. What do you need to do before you can use Google Drive? The first thing is you need a Google account, but it's free. It doesn't cost you anything. If you have, if you use a Gmail email account, whatever, at gmail.com, you already have a Google, that is a Google account. If you happen to have a main.edu email account or a sad27.org email account, those are already linked into Google and those are, you have Google account already associated with those, your email address. If you don't have any of those, if you're, you know, if you're joe at roadrunner.com, you may not have a Google account. So you would need to uh, create your own. You have two options for how to create a Google account. One way is to create a Google account that's linked to your current email account. So you can create a Google account linked to joe at um, roadrunner.com and now joe.roadrunner at roadrunner.com is your Google account name also. That way you don't have to have a separate account for, for Google. But if you want to, you can create a Gmail account and then you'll have a, a you can do it either way. The problem with G Gmail accounts right now is it's impossible to come up with a username that somebody hasn't already used. I was looking the other day, there are 150, oh, 1.8 billion Gmail accounts. So most combinations of people's names and numbers and things along that line have already been used. So, you know, you become Bill Loader 1473.92 or something, you know, if you want to do that. Um, plus, you have another account to keep track of. But you may, you may want to do that. I don't know. So, what I wanted to do now is sort of walk through the steps you have to go through to create a Gmail account, or a Google account, I'm sorry. Because I would hope that if you're at all interested, you will go home and create one if you don't already have one. Because once you do that, then you have access to Google Drive and a lot of other things, uh, and you can start looking around to see what would make sense to you. So let's talk a little bit about how you would do that. Okay, that's, now I'm jumping in too far. So let's, let's stop a second and just, uh, just, just talk a minute. So first of all, uh, to access Google, you need, obviously, the thing I didn't say on there is you need internet connection. You need a computer or a laptop or an iPad or even a phone, although, personally, I can't deal with typing on the phone, so I don't do that, but I do have an iPad that, that so you need that. And you need a browser, so who knows what browsers, what, what the name of a browser? Chrome. Chrome, Safari. that's one. Safari. Safari. Okay. So, and there's some others too. There's uh, Microsoft. Firefox. Firefox, my goodness, yeah, Firefox. And there are a couple of others out there too. So, you need to have a browser, but, but I mean, you will have a browser, but you'll need to use the browser as the avenue to get into, into Google. So, now I'll go back here. So let's assume we want to create a Google account linked to, to your existing email account. So in the browser address bar, okay, does everybody know what a browser address bar is? Um, yes, no? Yes. Okay, that's a little bar at the top. It's not that window in Google, in, that Google pops up that says search. You want the one at the very top where you have to type in HTTP, da, ba, 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 ba. Okay, so in there, you want to just type accounts.google.com. And when you do that, 
you're going to get to a screen that looks something like this, a window that looks something like this. And it's going to say, create your Google account, and then it has a box that says blah, 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 at gmail.com. Well, we don't want to create a Gmail account. We want to take the option. So the, wrong mouse. So this little bar here, use my current email address instead. So if you click on that, it's going to change this just a little bit. So let's assume I click on that. And now it's going to come up like this, where it says, create your Google account. And it's asking for your first name, your last name, and your current email address. So this is where you want to be if you're going to create a, uh, an email account, uh, a Google account linked to your email account. So then you put in your name, your first name, your last name, the email account you want it linked to. Don't, don't click on this because it'll jump back to the other way again. I find that annoying. I don't like the way they do it. And then you give it a, new, a password. Now this password doesn't have to be the same as the password you use to sign into your email. It could be. Google wouldn't know because they don't know about what, what your whatever.com email account is. Or you, you could use a completely different account uh, e password for this. But this will become your password for signing on to Google uh, from, from now on. I clicked the show password just so you could see what it was. Once you've done that, you click on the next button and you get a display that says, please verify your email address. What Google has done is it has quickly sent you an email to that address that you gave it with a code in it. And you need to go to your email and get that number, get that code, and enter it in this box right here to prove that you're, you are, in fact, that is really your email. And once you've done that, you press next. And then Google's going to ask you a couple of questions. They're going to ask you for your birth date, your gender, and your mobile phone number, um, and to accept the terms. Now, the birth date and gender are required. The phone number is not required, but I would suggest it's a good idea to give them a phone number, because if you ever need to go back and get, if you lose your password or something like that, and you need to get a reset, you'll need that phone number to connect with. And it's a good idea to have a phone, if you have a phone that as text, that's even better. And then write down your password, please. So now you have a, a Google account with your existing email account, your, yeah, your existing email account. If you, if you decide to do it the other way, if you want to create a new Gmail account, you can do that. Looks like this, you know, what it looked like before. And here I tried to come up with a username that was unique. Now, as you're typing that in, Google will tell you that that's not unique. It's not unique. It's not unique. Uh, and it'll give you some suggestions of things you can use that you know you may or may not like. But you can spend a lot of time just trying to come up with a good a good email uh, address for Gmail. But if you can do that, then you do basically the same thing here. You can enter a password for that. Go to the password, and then it's going to ask you for your phone number, um, another email address for recovery, again, so, so you could give it your, uh, another email address if you had to, your birth date and your gender. And then it's going to verify your phone number by sending you a text message to your phone. And you have to enter that code. And you're done. So at this point, you have now created a Gmail account one way or the other. And we're now going to change over and I'm going to stop with what we have. And we're going to give you something different. So this is what Google Drive looks like when it first comes up now. This has things in it that wouldn't exist in your Google account. 
But what I'd like to do is talk about uh, what is, what this, uh, this is your interface with Google Drive. Mm -hmm. And so you have this, you have two pages there. One says Google Drive Layout Explained, and then you have this Google Drive. So what I've done here is tried to lay out this second sheet in the same order that the first sheet is. So on the left side here, you have, on the left side here, you have this box that says new. And if you click on that, and I can't click on it here because this is not a, should I click on Here it is. So here is the bar that says new. If you click on that, it says, what do you want to do? I want to create something new. I'm going to create a new folder. Okay, you're, if you're familiar with folders and files and folders, uh, we have files and folders in Google Drive. Or I want to upload a file from my from my computer, from my device, whatever that might be, iPad or uh, phone or a computer. I want to upload a whole folder worth of information. Or I want to create a new a new Google Docs or a Google Sheet or a Google Slide or these are some of the products that Google has. So here's this is how you create new new entries in Google Drive. You either upload them from from your from your device or you create them here. And we we'll, we can see how that works later. Okay. So that's what that's the top that's the top of that. And then below that, these are this is like your high-level directory looking at Google Drive. You have what's called My Drive. These are all the things that actually are owned by you. On Google Drive, you can have things that are owned by somebody else. Somebody shared something with you. It's not, it's not yours, but you have access to it. So when you look at My Drive, you're looking at things that are owned by you. Forget about computers now, because. You have, we don't have anybody, nobody's linked computers with Google Drive here. Shared with me, this is showing you files that are, that are available on your Google Drive, but shared with you from, by somebody else. So, for example, somebody uh, shared a, their photos with you, they would be in, you see them when you click on shared by me. Recent. These are things you've worked on recently, you've been doing something with. Starred, these are, I don't have anything starred here. Uh, these are things that are, are important. And perhaps um, I said, oh, I don't, wanna, I don't wanna forget where that was. I can go over here and I can say add to starred. It puts a little star beside it. It's like <laughs> a little bookmark. So now when I go to starred, I'll see that light. So it's just, you know, it's like put a little tag on it and then you can call it up. And everybody knows what the trash is. These are things that you, you've discarded. Trash is held for 30 days. And then after 30 days, if you don't go back and retrieve it out of the trash, it, it'll get wiped up. It'll be gone forever. Uh, storage, this is just telling you how much storage you've used out of your, out of your 15 gigabytes. I've used one point 1.9 gig out of 15 gigabytes. I think I've had 1.9 for about two years now. I've never gone beyond that. I don't understand that. So, so the left side is basically a way to, to control what the files that are going to be seen here in the right side. And I guess I should have started with the right side. So this is a listing of the files on Google Drive. These files Okay, there's something else. Yeah, something else here too. This this top line that you see here with the with the icons, these are files that Google thinks you might be working on. Google's trying to be smart. You can get, I don't like them myself, and you can get rid of them. Um, I'm doing this. Show suggested file. Turn it off. And now they're gone. They're, I find them. I just find them a nuisance. So, my so this is a list of files. So I have these are folders. I have a folder called New Test Folder, and I have a folder called Level One Folder. 
I have another folder called Google Drive Class, that's for tonight, and then I have a file that's all by itself called Sample Spreadsheet. So those are, that's what I have on, on uh, Google Drive. Now if I want to look inside one of those folders, I can double click it, and now this tells me at the top that I'm in my Google Drive Class folder, and these are the files that are in that folder. Handouts, another set of handouts, and my third set of handouts. I have lots of handouts. Um, go back to Google Drive. Uh, the level one folder. Oh, I'm in my sub. I lost it. But I had another folder in there. I didn't. It's not. New test folder. Oh, oh there's my subfolder. And then, so you have folders within folders. So now I'm within my drive, test folder, subfolder, and it's empty. So that's in the center section. Let me, let me start over. Let me start over. Okay. Sorry, folks. Let's start at the top. Search my search and drive. This is a win. Uh, a, a tool that lets you search for anything you want to. Let's say I want to look for sub. And it found my subfolder. So that's a search, uh, search. Below that, is my drive. So this sort of just tells you where you are. You notice when I went into the folder, it then told me that I was in the, the test folder and so on down the line. So this line tells you where you are. Then we had suggested files, which I got rid of. And then below that, we have the file or folder list, which is listing the folders and files that you have. Now, the other thing you can do here, if you prefer, is you can change, instead of having a list, you can have What do they call it? A grid. You have a grid where it's, instead of having it as listed, you have a grid. You can just change that by clicking on this window back and forth. So that's what that is. It also tells you who the owner is, and the owner is me, and when it was last modified, and how big it is, if it has any size information. There's more information available about that. Now below that on this sheet, I have Selected file context menu. So if I select one of these files by right clicking on it, I get this menu that pops up that shows me things I can do with the file. I can preview it. I can open it with some program, Google Sheets or App Sheets. I can share it with somebody else. I can get a link. I can show the file location and tell me where I am. Shortcut, we'll talk about these in a second. Move, move it somewhere else, add it to the starred list, rename it, view the details, view the details over here. Tells me how big it is, when it was created, and I can have more information. Sorry, I'm jumping around. I'll do that. Copy it, download it to my computer if I want to, or remove it from Google Drive. So that's your list of files. Then the other thing is, over here in this, in this upper area, there's some, some uh, setting things. So this is uh, help, training, updates, uh, et cetera. So that's uh, basically help. This is your settings. Uh, it, uh, keyboard shortcuts. If anybody wants to use those, there they are. And a whole bunch of settings. We saw some of them earlier. I'm not going to go into any detail about what those are. We had these settings. And then we have this thing. And you'll see this on a lot of all these little, this little, um, I don't know. Thought. But if you ever want to know what all the apps are that Google has, here are some of them. 
Google search, Google Maps, news, play, blah, 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 and it goes on and on and on and on and on and on. So you can actually access these uh, applications from here also if you want to. But that's another class. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's definitely another class. But if some of you'll, somebody will tell you to hit those little buttons, those little dots, whatever they're called there. Now, when you have a file selected here, basically what, what happens is right here, you get pretty much the same list of things that you got when I did this, what I call the uh, context menu. You have basically the same things there. Share and, and link, there's share and link. This is preview, that's trash, this is more. And that's uh, zero location. So all these things are pretty much the same. And I guess some people prefer to access them from here rather than, hello mouse. Rather than here. I personally find it easier just to, when I'm looking at something, to get the list and, and pick it up. But that's, that's what all that is about. So let's talk about some of the different the, the different actions you can take on files. Now, the next page in this little, my little cheat sheet says basic file actions. Basic file operations. So upload a file from your device to the Google Drive. So as I said, the, the way to do that is go up to the new menu, file upload, and I'm going to go and look for a file. Uh, so there it says it's uploading it. Upload is complete, and here it is, BOT, Unified Accreditation, PowerPoint, and that's a PowerPoint file. So that's a, but one other thing about uh, Google, all the files that you deal with in Google, they're saved automatically. You never have to type save. Any changes you made are saved automatically, and they're reversible. tracked and they're reversible and you can step back uh, at some level. So that's that's how you upload a file. That's pretty easy. Go through that again. Okay, click on new and then upload a file, file upload. Go find the file you want to upload. Now you get a list, you know, you get your list of your directory of your of your disk whatever computer you have. Uh, see anything we're not supposed to see here. Yeah. Well, this, okay, now this says, oh, I've already got a file by that name. Do I want to replace it? I have a choice. I can either replace it or keep both files. Keep both files. Upload. And there it is. So there it is, there's the original one, and then they have the, the one, the, the second one has got a parentheses one to say it's, okay. it's a duplicate, basically. So my next step here is we want to download a file back to your computer. Oh. Okay, let's say I want this, my playlist, I need to download it to my computer because I lost it, my, I had a hard drive crash and I had a new, and now I got a new computer, and I don't have my my uh, workout playlist anymore. So what am I going to do? I'm going to select the document. I right-clicked on it, and I said download, and it just downloaded it to Aaron's <laughs> directory. And Aaron's going to wonder what that is tomorrow. <laughs> That's too bad. Oh well. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Bye. It's done. That's it. It's not, and this is unchanged. This is just like it was before. But where is it? It's somewhere. It's well, if it was on my computer, it would be in my downloads folder. You have to go to your downloads folder. That's where I go. That's where. That's my default on 
on my Windows session, my default folder for downloads is the downloads folder. And that's the, that is the quote standard, if you will. Okay, so that's how you upload and download. Move a file to a different folder. So let's say this uh, workout folder, this workout file, I want to put it in my uh, test folder. For some reason I don't like it there. Now, actually there's an easy way to do it, and that's just to grab it and drop it. No? You're supposed to be able to do that. Yeah. Oh, now. Oh. oh, there it goes. Yeah. Move to test folder. Now it's in test folder. There it is. Now you can also, you can also right click and do move to. And then it says, okay, so where do you want to move? You can hear folders. You can hear the folders, or you can go all the way back to, to, my, to the top level, move it to, uh, you know, to just to my drive, and then eventually, when you choose the right place, you'll see the move button lights up here. So now you can actually click that and move it. And it's moving up in some way. You've basically done the same thing, just enough. Yeah, but yeah, obviously drag and drop is easier. Um, so that's moving a file. Delete a file. And if you have a file that you want to get rid of, you can right click on it and trash it. Where is it? Trash? Oh, remove. It's called remove here. I could also have just selected the file and hit the trash can up here. Either way, puts it in the trash. You want to get it back? There it is. Now I can restore it or delete it for it. And I've got this is stuff that's in my trash now. Really make a copy of a file. So why would you want to make a copy of it? Well, maybe you want to try something out and you, know, you don't want to lose the original that you had. So you need to make a copy of this so you can make a copy. Whenever you make a copy of a file, it keeps it in the same place and it gives it the name copy of whatever it was. So then it's decided you don't like that naming convention. You can go here and rename it and you can call it uh, Version two. Uh, it's version two of the file. Which means that if you change version two, it won't be reflected in the. No, these are separate. These are physically separate files. Okay. Uh, but we have this. We have the solution to that. There's something called a shortcut. This is something new that Google's added recently. You can right click. And you can add a shortcut to your drive. So I've, I've selected that bot file, whatever that was. I'm adding a shortcut. And now it says, where do you want that shortcut? So right now I'm in my drive, and I want that shortcut in the level one folder for some unknown reason. So my bot file is still here, but if I go in the level one folder, I have not the file, but a shortcut to the file. So that's, those are the basic file operations. And I don't know what else we have that we can do. You can, we've talked about starring, um, show the file location. That just tells you where you are and that you know where it is. Um, share, we're gonna get to in a minute. Preview is just take a quick look. Rename, make a copy, download. So we've seen most of these. So let's talk about sharing. Because sharing is a little more complex. So let's go on the next page. Now when you share a file, if you want to share a file, and let people update it. You want them to be 
they have to be Google account holders. Okay. So if you want to share a file with specific Google account holders, because they're going to, because you don't want it just to be open to anybody, you want it to go to specific people, you can do this. So we take our sample spreadsheet and right click on it, we're going to share it. Now, Right now it tells me that I'm the, um, this is me, demo account. It says I'm the owner and I'm the only person that has access to it. So what I want to do is I want to share it with some people here. I want to share it with Liz. Let's I did? Yeah. What did I spell wrong? Oh, no wonder it didn't work. Oh, we all know your email. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look out. Okay. Now I can add more people here, and I just type in another name. And because Liz is known to Google, she's got a Google. Her Gmail account is a Google account. It knows who she is, and it even pulls up her picture for us. Mm -hmm. Nice. If if there's a, if you actually put in somebody that doesn't exist, it'll warn you about that and it'll tell you that they can't control them and it's going to be available to anybody. So you want to make sure you do that. Now the other thing that Alan was talking about was this access level. So we can specify that we want this person to be a viewer yeah. or a commenter or an editor. So a viewer basically can do just that. A commenter can view it and they can make comments which are associated with the document but not part of the document. Yeah. And then the editor can actually go in and make changes to the document. So we have this as a viewer. Now, if you want to, you can have Google, Google will send an uh, email to that person, telling whatever you tell them here. Say, here's the file that I asked you to review. Please have it back you know, by, by next Wednesday or whatever you want to say in there. And then when you're done, you say, actually, if you turn this off, it's, it's, uh, it's, no, it's no longer send, it's just share. Depending on whether you, here I said I was going to send a message, so then it says send. And you change that. So at this point, I would share it. So I'm not going to send a message to Liz. And now it says access updated. And now when I look at this sample spreadsheet, I will see, and I can share here, people with access, me and Liz. I'm the owner, she's a viewer. And you can have you know, lots of people here. So that's how you share a file with control. I say with control. Okay, so that's, uh, that's sharing a file in one way. At this point, I'm done. So let's say I want to share a file a different way. And this is called, well, this is for sharing with people who do not necessarily have a Google account. Again, I can share. Now, what I want to do here is I want to change this from restricted to anyone with a link. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send a link to a bunch of people and the link is going to point to this file. And the people that have access to, the people that will be able to open this file or look at this file are the people that have that link. But if somebody went out and just did a global search, they wouldn't be able to get the file. Oh, okay. So you have to have, it's, it won't be by their name, but by the fact that they have that link. It's like you're giving them a key, as opposed to oh. telling, you're not telling Google to control them by name. You say, if I gave them the key, they've got access to that document. Okay. At, again, oh. at whatever level, 
we give them. So we give them viewers. Yeah. So now, in order to, to make this happen, I have to copy that. So now I've done that with anyone in the link. I have to copy that link. And now I have to go into my Gmail. Compose an email to somebody and paste the link. There's the link. It's a nice long string there. You don't want to try to memorize what that is. And you then you you know you could save this, you send this email to whoever you want to. Say here's the link to the file that I want you to look at. And so all they all they can do is look at. It. Well, because we said they were viewers. If we said they were editors, they could edit it. Um, however, um, probably not a good idea because yeah. you won't. Because if somebody else gets, if they forward that email to somebody else, yeah. that email has a link in it. Somebody else could yeah. get use it. So you got to be. Yeah, that's not a good way to do it. But yeah. but if you have somebody that you want to share something with and they're not a Google a Google account, then that's your that's the option that you have. Uh, all right, here's some resources for tutorials that I found that I think are, are good. They're, they're basic level, but they're, they're, they're well done. This, this organization, GCF Global, I don't really know who they are, but they have tons of um, very short, you know, four or five minute videos. Yeah, some of these some of these things you go in and they yeah. 45 minutes on yeah, yeah. more than I can deal with. I don't have time to sit there for but this is you know four or five minutes and, you know they show you how to do something. Right. But anyway, there so those are those are some some I think some pretty good and and not too you know not somebody showing you all the tricks of you don't need the tricks of the trade. You need basic understanding. That's what you want now. So I will send that. I will send that list to everybody on the list. Okay, I'm going to uh, unless somebody has something else to uh, ask me. Now, what I'd like you all to do is think about what you want to do or might want to do with Google Drive or with Google. You know, we also have spreadsheets and docs if you're interested in doing those things. Um, good. To, we could look into that too. Um, there's nothing else. Mm -hmm. Say thank you very much for thank you. Thank you. Thank you. for coming to listen to me rant and rave and carry on. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. And, uh, okay, I've got the I got the list, the email. I'll send it to everybody. Yeah, I just put a plug in if I can oh, for yes. for, uh, for the next classes that are coming up and the the next one, which is on this Friday, November 11, Veterans Day, uh, there's a field trip down to the Veterans uh, Main Veterans Cemetery in Caribou. And while we are there, uh, we'll be there at 1 o'clock and we'll be meeting uh, at the Sports Center parking lot over here at the gymnasium at 11.30 uh, to, to carpool down or to follow each other, whatever we need to do. Some people who know their way will just meet us there or whatever. Um, but that's going to be, uh, they'll have their regular uh, Veterans Day ceremony and we'll be there to view that. And then they have a memorial building that we can all get inside of and they're going to give uh, the senior college a, a class on the history of how that cemetery all got started and and all of that so we'll be doing that uh, the class after that on November 15 I can give you some good reasons why you ought to go to this one one of them is the diesels 598 a gallon today um, gasoline was 389 today a pail of kerosene was $49 today so when I got done at docks today it was 136 bucks when I walked away and that was for that was for two pails of kerosene, two and a half gallons of gasoline, and five gallons of diesel. And 
and that came up to 136 bucks. Uh, so the the class is called Soul the Power, and it's with Dale Roy, and and I'm sure he'll have some uh, great information for people with for for that. And then our last class for this fall is going to be on November 22, and that's going to be called, it's called Storytelling and Art and History and local musician and historian um, Don Levesque, um, who's a great storyteller, um, is going to do uh, two stories for us. The first one's the true story of, excuse my French, but Le Grand Riviere Tain Blanche. And the second is a fictitious story of the legendary, legendary Petit Jean. So, anyways, thanks again, Bill, very, very much, and uh, and thank you all for coming to me. Appreciate thank it you. on this cold night. Thank you.